Good morning to all my friends and family and welcome to this episode of Jim's 5am Club. It's Monday morning, waiting for the light rail to uh, pull up and it's a bit breezy, a bit breezy, it's a bit cold. We've been hit by a cold snap, there's a bit of snow happening in the mountains and it's cooled things down a lot. Anyway, it's the beginning of another work week. I spent the whole day at home yesterday. Um, I've got a little bit of a cough happening at the moment and we were uh, babysitting my granddaughters as my daughter and son-in-law were in Melbourne for a few days. And uh, I did get a chance to uh, prepare, prepare a number of book summaries. I did about 20, so I spent the whole day just studying and reading and uh, I'm, I've got at least 20 to uh, kick off with this week. Uh, I must admit I do feel less pressured now that I've reached my thousand blogs and I'll just take my time, do whatever I can when I can uh, without pushing myself uh, because I guess um, now it's all, all about having some fun as opposed to uh, generating uh, massive amounts of content. So today's book summary is a real interesting one. Today's book summary is entitled A Universe from Nothing by an author named Lawrence, Lawrence M. Krauss. And we're basically going to talk about science and the universe and something a little bit different to what we normally talk about. And the author here kicks off the book with a, an interesting sort of quote where he says, the amazing the thing is, is that every key. atom in your body came from a star that exploded. And the atoms in your left hand probably came from a star different to the one, one to the atoms which are in your right. So this is a, a little bit different. To, so this is more about a, um, a scientific look at the creation of uh, the universe and man. And I guess if, you, uh, you know, if you're that way inclined, you can probably find some parallels with the scriptural um, versions. But uh, I won't comment on that. That'll be something, you know, as I said, you know, the, the advantage of Jim's 5am club is that I'm an emissary of what the author is writing and not basically giving any uh, opinion of my own. So the author here, in their first formal point, tells us that the universe is expanding and doing so faster each day. So the whole universe is expanding and it's expanding at a faster rate every single day so according to science the big bang happened 14 billion years ago um, and the reason why scientists have been able to uh, um, uh, hypothesize that it's expanding at a faster rate is that they've been able to figure it out by using a thing called the Doppler, the Doppler effect. And the Doppler effect is that effect that you have, you know, when you're standing at the, on the corner of a road and a car goes past, and as it goes past, the sound gets less and less and less as it goes into the distance. So it builds up when it's coming towards you and then lessens as it goes past you. The Doppler effect from a, uh, uh, from a, an astrom astronomer's perspective, rather than sound, rather than using sound, they use light. And what they say is that as something is moving away from you, the further it gets, the color of the light changes as it moves away. And they've been able to observe that the color of uh, certain galaxies and stars changes over time which uh, reinforces the point that uh, 
the stars are moving away, the galaxies are moving away, and the universe continues to expand, as we said, at a faster rate. Not only is it expanding, but it's expanding at a faster rate, which is phenomenal. So basically the stars, the planets, everything that we see up there in the sky are moving away from us. And I've used this analogy years ago to uh, remind me of how families and friends are. You know, we start, start off nice and close together with lots of things in common. And yet over time, we drift apart and we get further and further apart, which is, which is quite scary actually, to think that the universe is doing the same thing. So the second formal point to come out of this book from this author is where the author talks about dark energy and dark matter. Because what he says here is this whole dark thing that we talk about is really, um, is really just invisible, invisible matter. They call it dark matter and dark energy, but it's all about stuff which is invisible and it can't be seen and it can't be seen by the instruments our scientists have. So we have limitations in science. So there are a lot of people who believe in science and say that science knows everything. But there are heaps and heaps of things that scientists have no idea about because we have limits. There are limits to the equipment that we have in order, us to, in order for them and us to make observations. So the author here is saying to us that uh, there is dark matter and you can't see to the edge of the universe. Um, and the other thing that scientists can't tell us is what causes, what is the force that causes the universe to continue to expand? Now it's quite phenomenal that there is a force which not only you know created the universe but continues to make it expand at an ex accelerated rate. So it's not just expanding, but it's expanding quicker than what it has ever expanded before. So as we said before, most of the universe is invisible, made up of dark matter which is invisible matter that cannot be seen nor measured by our instruments. Um, the author then goes on to say that although, that we, although we can currently see our neighboring galaxies, eventually our expanding universe will make this impossible. So what the author is saying here is that um, because the universe is expanding and it's expanding at a greater rate, um, if you're a scientist um, looking at the universe from Earth in say a thousand years time, you may not even be able to see certain things. Um, our closest galaxy, for example, let's put it into perspective, our closest galaxy is two million light years away where if you put that into kilometers so if you take two million and multiply it by um, I think it's 300 300,000 kilometers per second um, it's, a, it's a long long way away so some galaxies are so far their light will never ever reach us that is mind-boggling. You look up in the sky or you get a telescope, you get the most powerful telescope in the world and you shoot it into space and, st and still there are some galaxies, if not many, many galaxies, that you can't see because they are simply too far away. There are some galaxies, I'll repeat that, there are some galaxies where the light will never ever reach us. 
So uh, in summary, the universe is growing at an increasing rate, which means that one day scientists would wrongly conclude that our stationary, unmoving galaxy is all that exists. How funny is that? I remember at one Easter, uh, one uh, Resurrection Easter sermon, Father, Father Dimitrios from Parramatta was saying that surely, surely people don't think that the creation of Earth, the creation of the universe, and all of the uh, um, all the wonderment of creation couldn't be the product of one big monumental um, fluke because as we know there are so many things that have to happen there are so many things that need to be aligned that to think that it's all part of just one massive fluke of nature would be uh, quite uh, quite adventurous and folly how you going Brady? So let's finish off with a positive affirmation. I'm alive, I'm well, I feel absolutely great. Thank you for joining me today. I won't give uh, a big conclusion to this vlog because I want to try and keep them under 10 minutes. I've, uh, I've been told by my daughter that uh, I am talking for far too long. So thank you very much for joining me on this episode of Jim's 5am Club, where we talked about science science and we talked about the limitations of science science can teach us a lot of things can tell us a lot of things but there's also a lot of things that it has absolutely no idea about and will never ever be able to answer so yasas take care and we'll chat again from jim's 5am club on this monday morning if you like ya, and bye for now